In this video, we will see how to configure Spring Security in our application, and then we will also build an API to register users and verify users in our application. So inside the root package, let's create another package called as config. And inside this package, let's create a class called as security config. This class, as the name suggests, hold the complete security configuration for our backend. The first thing we are going to do is add the at enable web security annotation to this class. This is the main annotation which enables the web security module in our project, which we have added to this spring security starter dependency. After that, let's extend our class using web security configurer adapter. This is the base class for our security config class. It provides us all the default security configurations, uh, which we can override and customize in our application. To do that, first we have to override the configure method, which is coming in from the base class. This configure method takes HTTP security object as input. And inside this method, we will disable CSRF protection for our backend. We are disabling it because CSRF attacks can mainly occur when there are sessions and when we are using cookies to authenticate the session information. As REST APIs are stateless by definition, and as we are using JSON Web Tokens for authorization, we can safely disable this feature. Next up, we will allow all the incoming requests to our backend API, whose endpoint URL starts with slash API slash auth. And we make sure that any other request, which does not match this pattern, should be authenticated. So we are done with the security configuration for now. Let's create the endpoint to register our users. I'm going to create a package called as controller. And inside this package, I'm going to create a class called as auth controller. And I'm going to add rest controller annotation on top of this class, followed by the request mapping annotation, which takes the value slash API slash auth. Now let's create a post mapping inside the class with value as slash sign up. Let's also create a method called as sign up. And to this method, we will be giving an input of type register request. Through this class, we'll be transferring the user details like username, password, and email as part of the request body. We call this kinds of class as a DTO, that means a data transfer object. I'm going to create this class and put it inside a package called as DTO. And to this class, Let's add our Lombok annotations at data, at all logs constructor, and lastly, no logs constructor. Now let's declare the fields. The first one would be username, followed by email, and lastly, the password field. Now let's create a class called as auth service inside a new package called as service. This auth service class contains the main business logic to register the users. That means creating the user object and saving it to the database and uh, sending out activation emails, etc. I will create a method called as sign up inside the class, which takes in the register request object as input. And the first thing we have to do is to create an object for the user class. And we will map the data we have from the register request object to the user object. First one would be the username, email, and password fields. The created uh, field, I will pass in the value as instant.now. This is the Java 8 class to get current time. And uh, lastly, by default, we will disable the user. So let's set the value for is enabled as false. And once the user is uh, successfully validated, we will set this value, we will set the enable flag as true. Before saving the user object to the database, we have to make sure that we encode the password. Storing the password in clear text is a very bad idea. So imagine that if your database is compromised, you have to make sure that it would be very hard for the hacker to actually crack the password. That's why we encode it using different hashing algorithms, which makes it very hard to decode the passwords. One of the best hashing algorithms we can use in this scenario is the bcrypt hashing algorithm. Spring Security provides us a class which implements this algorithm called as bcrypt password encoder. Now let's use this class to encode our passwords. I'll go back to security config class and here I will create a bean for the password encoder. 
As the password encoder is an interface, we have to create a bean manually inside the configuration class. And whenever we are auto-wiring this bean, we will get an instance of type bcrypt password encoder. Now let's go back to auth service and auto wire the password encoder. Now let's call the encode method of the password encoder before setting the password field for the user. And that should be it. Spring will now take care of encoding the password. Now it's time to save our user inside the database. For that, let's first auto wire the user repository in our class. And inside the sign up method, let's type user repository dot save and pass the user object to the save method. Now it's time to do some refactoring for this class. You can see that we are using auto wired annotation. There's not there's actually nothing wrong with using auto wired annotation, but it is not usually recommended to use it because uh, we are using field injection here and spring recommends us to use constructor injection whenever possible. So I will add a link to a very good article which explains why to use constructor injection over field injection, but uh, just make sure to check that link. Uh, I will not explain it in detail in this video, but uh, so let's remove this auto wide annotation and declare our field as final. And usually we have to create a constructor and set the variable for our fields and set the variable for our fields. But all this is taken care of by the at all logs constructor. Let's add that to our class. And lastly, let's not forget to add the transactional annotation to this method as we are interacting with the relational database. Now let's enhance our registration process by sending out account activation emails. For this, the idea is to generate a verification token right after we save the user to the database and send that token as part of the verification email. Once the user is verified, then we enable the user to log into our application by setting the enable field as true. Let's create a method called as generate verification token, which takes user object as input. And let's generate a random token here. We can do that by typing UUID dot random UUID. This will generate a unique and random 128 bit value, which we can use as our verification token. Now it's just enough to send. Now it's just not enough to send this token through email and forget about it. We also need to persist this token in our database. So if the user chose to verify the account after two or three days, we may not have this in memory at the time. So it's better to save this token in the database. And whenever the user has verified the email, he, we will look up the token and then enable the user. So I will create an object for verification token and pass in the user and token details. Now let's auto wire the verification token repository and save the token to the database. And also we will just return this token back to our signup method. Right, now it's time to send out the activation email for the users. As first step, we need to add some additional dependencies to our project if we want to send HTML emails from our application. We will use a template engine called as Thymeleaf, which enables us to create HTML templates and use those templates to send the emails. Let's go to our pom.xml file and let me add the Thymeleaf starter dependency. Now let's go to the source main resources folder and inside the template folder here, we create a HTML file called as mail template.html. And inside this file, I will paste this HTML code, which contains a span tag. And here a variable called message is injected through timeleaf's text tag. Back inside the service package, let's create a class called as mail content builder. This class contains a method called as build. And this method takes the email message we want to send to the user as input. And we set this email message inside the timeleaf's context object. We are doing that by using the set variable method of context. And lastly, we will be passing the HTML file name and the context to the template engine through the template engine's process method. So at runtime, Timely will automatically add the email message to our HTML template. Okay, now it's time to send out email messages. Let's create another class inside the service package called as mail service. Let's add an annotation to this class, the usual service and at all logs constructor annotation. Let's create a method called as send mail. And this method takes the object of type notification email as input. 
If you go inside the notification email class, you can see that it encapsulates all the details we need for an email such as recipient, subject and body of the email. Let's go back to send email method and I will quickly paste in some code here. And now let me explain this. Uh, so we are constructing an instance of type mime message helper inside the Lambda, which creates an instance of type mime message prepared my message preparator and to this my message helper we are passing in the data like the sender information we are hard coding it as spring reddit at email.com this can be any fake email address you like uh, but uh, here as we are using a fake smtp server it doesn't matter if you want to use a real world smtp server like gmail or something else then you have to give a real email address here or else it won't work so moving on we have our set to set subject and set text methods. We are just mapping these fields from notification email object. But for the set text method, we are calling the build method of mail content builder object. So this method will return the message in the HTML format. Lastly, we are using the send method of the Java mail sender class and we are logging a message called as activation email sent. But we have a compilation error here because we did not define this log variable anywhere. For that, we can use the SLF4J annotation from Lombok, which will create an instance of uh, SLF4J logger object and inject it into our class. So we have this particular code wrapped inside the try catch block and inside the catch block, we are throwing a new exception called as spring reddit exception with a message. Let's create this class and place it in another package called as exceptions. This class should extend the runtime exception class and inside the constructor, we will call the super method and pass in the exception message. So you may ask, why are we doing this? What is the purpose of doing this, right? So let's discuss about this briefly. In our backend, especially when we are building REST APIs, exceptions are pretty common in our code. So whenever those exceptions occur, we don't want to expose the technical information to the user. For instance, like illegal state exception, null pointer exception, or um, socket exception, something like this. We should ideally present this information in an understandable format. We can do that by creating custom exception like this, Spring Reddit exception, and pass in our own exception messages. You can either create multiple exceptions for each use case in our application, or create one exception to your whole application and reuse them uh, everywhere in your code. All right, so we have covered all the logic to send out the emails. But one thing we still need to do is to configure the SMTP server details in our application. For that, we are going to use a fake SMTP server called as MailTrap. You can use this service to test your code which sends out the emails. First of all, you can go to MailTrap.io and make sure to sign up for the service. And after signing up, you can get... And after signing up, you get your SMTP server details inside the inbox. These details look something like how you see on the screen. You get a host of the mail server, a port which we can use, and a username and password. So let's configure these details inside our application.properties. So I'm going to copy these properties here. We have a spring mail host, port, username and password. All these details you can get through the mail trap service. And lastly, the protocol we are going to send emails would be SMTP. Okay, now we have configured our SMTP server and created our mail service. We still need to call our mail service from our signup method. Let's do this. Back inside the auth service class, let's inject the mail service class and right after this, and right after the generate verification token method, I'm going to type mail service dot send and we are going to create an object of type notification email. And to this email, the f and to this object, the first argument would be the subject. Let's pass in a string, please activate your account as the first argument. The second argument would be the recipient. For that, we type user.getEmail. And the last one is the body of the email. I'm going to paste in a string here. This string contains a URL which redirects the user to our server. And to this, we are going to append our verification token. So whenever the user clicks on this URL, we take the token from the URL parameter and look it up in our DB, fetch the user who created this token and enable that user. That's how the flow would be. So the remaining part here is we have to call this signup method from our auth controller. Let's do that. 
Back inside the controller, I'm going to inject the auth service class and call the signup method. And so if the registration is successful, we have to send a message to the client. We can do that by just returning a response entity, which takes a string as the first argument, and we will pass the string user registration successful. And the second argument would be an enum value OK from HTTP status enum. OK, we are ready to test. OK, now we are ready to test our registration flow. Let's start the server and go to Postman. So I'm using a REST client called Postman to make calls to our backend here. Uh, I'm making a post call to our signup endpoint with the user details in the body. Now let's click on send. And we got a response block and we got a response back from the server as user registration success. The first thing is let's check the database and check if our user is really saved and the password is encoded or not. So inside the MySQL workbench, you can see that we have our user test user five and the password we have typed as password five in the initial request, but you can see that the password is encoded inside the database. Now let's check if we got the email or not. Let's open our mail trap inbox. As you can see, we already got the email and you can see the activation link in the email. If you copy this activation link and open it in the new tab, nothing happens because we did not create the endpoint to activate the user. Let's do that now. In the next video, we will see how to create the endpoint to verify the users and enable asynchronous processing in our project to execute the mail sending logic asynchronously. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel. I will see you in the next video. Until then, happy coding.